What's going on, Foot Clan? We're talking trades on today's show. Players to trade for, players to trade away. Some hotly contested debates and a lot of questions that need answers when it comes to trading players. Do not miss a minute of today's show. We also go over the Thursday night football game. Make sure you click subscribe. Stay with us all year. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday edition of the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you for joining us. You beautiful people out there. So attractive. Thank you, Mike. That's so out there. I'm, out, the, I'm outside of you. Yeah. Well, the the bone good. structure of your face is perfect. Thank Listeners? You. Yes. Okay. Look at those cheeks. Welcome in, one and all. Excited to have you join us. Let's talk trades today. We're going to talk trade for, trade away players. Always fun to discuss that. And in the spirit of today's episode, I made a trade of my own in our League of Records. Just Ooh. to, you know, get in, the, get in the mood. Be able to talk trades more, you know, intimately. And uh, we've got NFL news. We've got Hungry for More. We've got the Thursday Night Preview. One of the most ironic things before you move on is yeah. that on today's episode, you, we have some players to trade for and some players to trade away, and you traded away one of the players you are saying you should trade for. That is, but we'll get there. That is true, but you have to admit, in my situation, yeah. it makes perfect Sit sense. Situations are different, and obviously players that you think you should trade away is because they have value. That is correct. And so, yeah, I uh, we'll leave it there, and then we'll talk about it here soon. Uh, you can check out the Dynasty podcast. Jason was on the most recent episode with Borg and Betts. They talked old, bland, and undervalued players. Yeah, it was it was a really good episode where we talk about the the importance of aged veterans in Dynasty leagues, how to appropriately use them, capitalize them uh, on them. Uh, you know, it's a very valuable episode. I thought. Absolutely, we had. Uh, I just saw waivers go through in our dynasty league, and uh, Mr. Jameis Winston going for a big dynasty cash. Yeah, makes sense. Does it, though? Yeah, look, in dynasty, the, at least we play with two budgets, your in-season and your off-season. So your in-season, it's going to reset, and it's very rare to have anyone of true value pop up on the dynasty waiver wire. And if you need a quarterback, then you sh you should go after it. If a team really needed a quarterback to play this week, that would make sense to kind of secure a start. But obviously, we don't know how long Jameis Winston will last. We don't know how good he will be in most matchups. I mean, we do. It's bad. Um, but this week, if you need a start, that uh, makes sense. No other bids on Jameis Winston. So a, a, do a dollar <laughs> would have grabbed him. It happens. Andy what if, Dalton. What if your dynasty quarterbacks were Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford? Yeah, I still wouldn't do that. <laughs> Your dynasty fab, really? I no, would, I mean, I would, look, everybody, every, you know, like you said, the the dynasty fab, there's not a lot of guys to spend it on. It just feels like, are you going to play Winston over Russell Wilson this week against Chicago? I would play Russ. Probably not this week, but and, and, and what but if James might not be starting the next week. Maybe not. Okay. But I, what if that is a defensive lingers? Jameis Winston <laughs> manager right no, here? I, I respect the move. Look, Derek Carr is going to be out multiple weeks. And, and let's, I think. let's be honest, uh, yesterday we talked about what a delight. Jameis Winston yes. was, and I think this is just a situation where it's like, yeah, I want that in my locker room. I you know, want him on my well, team. Well, see, that makes sense, but you know who I got for uh, three fab that I, might be the start of the rest of the year? Trevor Simeon. Sure. Well, not, not starting this week. No, no. So I just – long sure. view, short view, I get it. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not mad at you, Brooks. Oh, no, I just yeah. had to explain – why I, I would spend up that much in a don those guys? Yeah, I I feel like if Winston, I feel like Winston was worth rostering probably in a dynasty as a depth play. Anyways, uh, what else is going on? Do we have uh, we got our drop it like it's hot reminder, which is I just said waivers went through in every league, players hitting the waiver wire after 
it runs is very important. You want to browse that. Guys are going to hit, uh, in fact, um, Dak Prescott just mm-hmm. hit the waiver wire. Sean Tucker just hit the waiver wire. Probably- Mike Williams <laughs> just Mike hit Williams. the waiver oh, man. wire. So sad. I like Dean Harditz's tweet. He said, keep Mike Williams on the roster. Put him on your IR so he can get a ring with the rest of the players if you ah, happen to win the okay. championship. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so uh, lots going on. Let's go ahead and jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. It's quite the tail on that drop, Mike. It's very nice. Yeah, he's Thank hungry you. for more. Yeah. Well, we all chose wide receivers this week. Um, some players we've seen flashes of through the first three weeks of the season that we, you know, we're hungry for more. We want to see more production. We're expecting more production. And they may be worthy stashes for your bench. For me, this is really PPR leagues only. But I would put this player on your bench, and that is Josh Downs, rookie wide receiver for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, 12 targets this past week with Gardner Minshew, 8 for 57. And to me, Josh Downs is a talented player that will demand targets the rest of the season. It won't be to the tune of 12 because Gardner is going to pass more than Anthony Richardson, who is back at practice. But I like to see I, – I think the trajectory for Josh Downs is very positive. You had involvement from the beginning of the season. They had spent offseason capital on Isaiah McKenzie, who has not earned a role. Josh Downs is establishing it. And it's a nice compliment to what you have in Michael Pittman. So Alex Pier- Alec Pierce, not been very involved. He's a downfield guy. He's going to have limited total volume. And Josh Downs through three weeks has passed the eye test for me. I think he's a player that he's spot startable on any given week and and may have more value as time goes on. So I I completely agree with most everything you're saying. Uh, You can't ask Josh Downs to do much more than he's already done. Winning the job pretty much from week one in his rookie season, looking good, passing the eyeball test. It's pretty much completely a, a green light situation, and you're right that it's it's primarily a PPR play. He's not going to be a giant play downfield stretcher. So uh, the only the only place I I disagree on, and I don't I don't think it's a disagreement at all. Is just I do think the ceiling is limited. You know, you're you're hoping that he has a Cole Beasley type career um, in in just the role and Cole Beasley was very relevant for several years in in fantasy so that's kind of yeah I, I see it and I I think it's, it's a little bit like you know last year there was excitement before the injury for Wandale Robinson in New York like Josh Downs has sure. got the same type of I, I think the same type of player as Wandale is and um, the jitterbug yeah undersized yeah. he's gonna catch the the football and uh, you know his yards per catch this past week with Gardner was seven you know it, it, that's just the name of the game but is he going to produce similar to maybe like a Michael Thomas does over the course of the year? It's possible. Yeah, I'm looking at the target shares. It's for a rookie, 18. That was, you know, week one with Anthony Richardson, then 16%, then 29%. Meanwhile, Alec Pierce, which it's different types of targets, but 8%, 6% in the two games with, well, mostly with Anthony Richardson. He got Richardson, of course, got knocked out in week two, but. Richardson goes to Michael Pittman, and he goes to Josh Downs right now. And the wide receiver target share was 39% for Josh Downs in week number three. 32% of the yards. Just a guy to keep your eye on. Absolutely. Hungry for a little more. Oh, if we're talking about hungry for more, I'm sorry, guys. I've got the dude. Yeah, I've got <laughs> the dude. He is also hungry he, for more. Everyone is hungry for more Marvin Mims. Uh, Sean Payton's full. Well, he's, yeah, apparently he's seen enough. Get on the freaking field, man. He is, first of all, he's really, really good. This is a, a wide receiver. We we talked about him in the offseason, obviously in the draft season. Um, he's talented. His production profile is great. He checks virtually every box of like the things you look for in production, in age, in athleticism, in draft, film, draft, draft capital. capital. He's the wide receiver 13 and 18. On twenty four percent of snaps the last two weeks, you know who he reminds me of is the wide. He's now the wide receiver version of rookie year David Johnson. Yes, <laughs> because, yes! because David Johnson never got on the field, 
and yet he found a way to have fantasy relevant weeks with limited touches, kick returns, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Totally. And, and what's funny is you you say he was the wide receiver thirteen, he was the wide receiver eighteen. The wide receiver eighteen finishes last week is only if you do not include his touchdown on his awesome punt return. If if you have uh you know special team scoring as well, then then he's even better than that. Uh, he is. He ran eleven routes last week, and I don't know if you know this, but he, so this is uh, by the way, Marvin Mims is a rookie wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. Um, most people are completely unaware at this point. The Denver Broncos were down in that game. Wait, yeah, this against, past week? Yeah, against the Dolphins this last week. They, they uh, I tuned out. Yeah, everyone did. <laughs> so did the Broncos. Um, but this was an opportunity to get this rookie on the field who's an explosive athlete. He was the only – even after the game, Sean Payton said the only good play of the game was Marvin Mims' touchdown return on special teams. Um, Brandon Johnson's getting 60% of the snaps. What are you doing? Brandon Johnson, get out of Marvin Mims' way. Get Marvin Mims on the field. He is breaking every yards per route run metric that exists. And here's the thing. It almost feels like yards per route, like <laughs> right. single route run. Yeah. How good was your route today? It was great. Uh, <laughs> Marvin Mims is talented. Uh, Johnson being on the field that much shows that there is an opportunity to get Marvin Mims more snaps. Additionally, the Broncos are running 11 personnel on just 47% of their snaps. That is 23rd in the league. I'm league, sure Dulcich going down changed that a lot. League average of three-plus wide receivers is more like 65%. So there are multiple ways because, Andy, you brought up, He's not overtaking Cortland Sutton. He's not overtaking Jerry Judy. Now, an injury to either of those players should catapult Marvin Mims' opportunity easier. Um, he will be the wide receiver three, but if you could have him be a 60% snap player like Johnson is, I think Marvin Mims will be someone that you could throw in your lineup every week and hope for a, a, a great play because he is, I think, a special, talented uh, rookie wide receiver. Oh, negative game scripts. You just talked about it. That could be the recipe for Denver the whole year. Yeah, I really, really, really want to see more Mims. And, uh, and now if, the problem is, is do you roster him? Because I don't think I don't think I, right now. I think you probably wait I have, and Fab. Yeah, don't you? I mean, I have him on a couple of different teams where in he's, redraft in in redraft where he's just waiting on my bench. Um, you know, if you need a start immediately, then sure, you you probably want to look elsewhere. But I do think, I mean, after this last week. I wouldn't be surprised if if uh, Denver goes, eh, let's make some changes. I mean, at some point, Marvin Mims will work his way onto the field. Mike, give us the third wide receiver you All are right. hungry am, for more. I am hungry for more because I want to know what is the truth for this player, and I don't think that we can accurately say what it is. The, the truth of the first three weeks is Romeo Dobbs of the Green Bay Packers has been Fantastic for fantasy football. Week one, number one, wide receiver 10, wide week number two, it's terrible. Jaden Reed gets all the, the love. Week three, his hamstring looks like it is finally back to healthy. His snaps. Maximum have, hamstring. His, his snaps have jumped from. You. From <laughs> it's me, my hamstring. Is that Adam? Adam Thielen's hamstrings? <laughs> yeah, because he's such a young man. Um, 48% of the snaps in week one, he's now back up to 86% and 12 targets. Now, I know the, the Packers were uh, mounting themselves. They come back against the New Orleans Saints, but 12 targets, only five receptions, but 73 yards and a touchdown. Jordan Love, I mean, has been really overproducing when it comes to touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs has been part of that. And the, the accuracy hasn't totally been there for Jordan Love. Now, what I mean by we don't know the truth is Christian Watson should be back Thursday. Aaron Jones should be back on Thursday. But Romeo Dobbs was the one who got the bulk of the offseason hype yet again for the Green Bay Packers. The beat reporters were saying Romeo Dobbs, it, he looks like he is Jordan Love's guy. He's 6'2", he's 204 pounds. Like He is he is built like a, a wide receiver one or a, a, the, the X player who can absolutely get it done. What does, what does Christian Watson do to the target share when Romeo Dobbs is on the field? He, maybe he comes in and Watson's the superstar. But that's why I'm hungry here. I want to see, can Dobbs become that player that had hope two years ago, had even more hope this year, and so far, so good. 
I think it's very possible. If you look at the targets being distributed to, you know, I think he's a good young player, Jaden Reed, seven, eight targets the past two weeks. You look at the targets distributed to Dontavian Wicks, six targets, four targets, Luke Musgrave getting targets. Yep. This offense, uh, you know, they, they're throwing the football. And so there should be enough to go around. I do think Christian Watson, and, um, you know, he's not in the segment later, to me, he is a trade for target. Sure. I think Christian yeah, Watson potentially, and I, I hate saying it out loud right now because I had some offers in the works for Al Borland, who's got Christian Watson on his You bench. aren't getting him from And I, ga I gave up because, exactly. I said, eh, he's not doing this. He's, he's a, a Packers he's fan. He's a Packer fan. I think Christian Watson is going to be very good. And I think Romeo Dobbs can be very good as well. Yeah, I, There is a world where Watson is getting, you know, the six targets a week and just hitting on two to three huge plays. But Romeo Dobbs is uh, more like a like a Des Bryant type of player where it's, you get higher target volume and you get a lot of touchdown upside because he's so big. And the nice thing is, is when Watson's out there, you know what won't happen? Right. Double coverage. Yeah. Double oh, coverage. Yeah, I oh, like it. Oh, man, I'm hungry for more <laughs> of that. No one's, have... even, no one's even hitting the button. Man. I don't know if I have a button for that. No, that works. Okay. You approved. Okay. Yep. The, uh, I got a button. Here's a button. Take a bow. Uh, that was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. With Uber Eats, get anything delivered? Well, almost, almost anything. Running backs? No, no. Mike could use one. Yeah, can, can we get that? Uh, we I can't delivery? get that delivered. I've got, you know, make me a trade offer. <laughs> uh, flapjacks and baby backs? Yes, you can get those. Order now on the app. Product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Yeah, I was I was gonna come at you with like a uh, like a Laporta based offer for Christian Watson, but then I realized you did. Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then I realized I did. Did I, re did I really? You did. I realized you said no. <laughs> I think my uh, Andy trade offer AI bot might have sent that through and not uh, me, but I saw you. You know, you got Darren Waller, and you're kind of kind of stuck, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not happy with the output I've gotten from. Like, are, w were you actually interested in Laporta, despite being a Waller manager? Sure. Oh, okay, I look. You learn it, something new every day. All right, into the news. Saquon Barkley day to day category, according to Brian Dable. He's been day to day since the injury. Yeah. There, there's two things cannot be true here. Right. He can either be day to day, and it's not a high ankle sprain, in right. my opinion, or he can have a high ankle sprain, and Brian Dable is what we call. A liar. Well, considering Saquon came out and said it is a high ankle sprain, and considering that almost every head coach in the league is a liar, <laughs> I'm going to 100% assume that this is a high ankle sprain. Um, I, I saw a really neat tweet from uh, Edwin Porras who talked about how high ankle sprains, the, the, the average time to come back on the field is almost always either zero missed games or three missed games. Like, that's that's when you have an, a high ankle sprain. Interesting. You're either back the next week and you just – This is why you were, you were in on burrito. Yeah, 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 or or uh, you're going to miss three games. So I don't expect this day-to-day -day, – I mean, the day-to-day -day nonsense is probably something where you it just means bad news for waivers and you got to wait till Sunday before he's ruled out. Yeah, nope. Even worse, Jason. Giants are Monday night. Oh, are so you, Brian? It, it is an absolute disaster. And, I, and I'm cackling over to myself imagining – because coaches do this, you know, just like the, 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 the Gannon move of who's our quarterback. Brian Dable's trying to gather some sort of competitive competitive advantage. And I'm imagine being the defense. All week you're getting ready for Saquon Barkley. And then he's ruled out and you're like, oh, crap. Our plan was for Saquon. How are we possibly going to stop Matt Burita and company? Just tear up the defensive play calling. It's ruined. Someone, someone <laughs> quickly get on this Gary Brightwell stop. Stop each plan. Yeah. What do we do? Yeah, the opposite would be the only competitive yes. advantage where there's om there's no that chance. Is the, uh, that's yeah. the better one to go with. Dayball yeah. should be saying, oh. It's going to be free to this it's week. It's probably going to be several weeks. And he, then, boom, <laughs> Saquon's on the feet. He might be month to month at this point. I don't know. You're right. He should completely flip it. Uh, that being said, Monday night game. Gives him I an extra day to recover. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I want to throw the committee out there. Matt Breida had four carries last game. Now, one of them ended up as a touchdown to salvage your night. But it would have been an unmitigated, 
almost goose from your running back but, position. And Gary Brightwell got a lot of work, and we didn't even see Gray. So yeah, they they did basically split the work. Uh, we we've talked a lot about Brightwell as, uh, or, or I'm sorry, we've talked Burita. a lot about Burita and not a lot about uh, Brightwell as the replacement. So you know, I I would still definitely go Burita first, but it's not like he just inherits Saquon well, Barkley's volume. And we you knew it was going to be a disaster against the San Francisco 49ers and that the that picking up Burita was more of a well if ba if Barkley misses time then they get the Seattle Seahawks the next week that's not that you're loving playing Matt Burita but look at the landscape of the running backs we're not loving very many of them at all right now Anthony Richardson progressing through the concussion protocol will take normal reps today we expect him back he on the field he should play then yeah Doug Peterson said Zay Jones is a long shot to play in week four. See, now that's how you do it, Doug. Yeah. That's how you do it. Oh, he's definitely not going to be there. <laughs> long shot. Cardinals not in a hurry to immediately activate Kyler Murray when the pop window opens, according to Jonathan Gannon. I know, Jason, you have this, some stuff to say Yeah, here. this was a really important quote from Jonathan Gannon. Um, not only did he say that just because the window of his availability to, to activate him from the pup – he, he said, you know, yeah, I, we realize we can. You know, it's probably not going to happen right now, so that's important. But then he talked about he wants him to be ready physically and mentally, have a couple of weeks of practice. So what this means is that – so the way that the pup works is once you activate someone off the pup, they can practice. But you still have, I think it's 21, 21 days. days before you basically have to have them active in a game or else they basically go back to pup for the rest of the season, which means – Based on his own uh, words, and I and I believe this uh, because of how and when it was shared. Basically, they're not going to activate him yet, and then when they do, it's probably another three weeks until you see him. So I think you're you're talking about a month and a half, two months before you see Kyler. And I this is really important for fantasy because I was starting to toy around with okay, we the Cardinals play San Francisco this week. It's probably not going to go well. Um, obviously they had a good game against Dallas, but this one's in San Francisco and Hollywood looks like a great trade for target. If Kyler's going to be back soon, this quote means Kyler is not back for another month or two. Okay. That's yeah. Yeah. You're right. I th and I think, did you see this thing? Arizona didn't have a Jersey available for Joshua <laughs> yes. Dobbs. Yes. yes. They weren't selling in, in them the store in the store. So they, uh, they fixed it and he did. got one. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break, back with our trade segment. All right, let's jump in. Let's talk trades. Shall we? Shall we? Yes, let's do it. Um, Shall we trade? I I jumped in this morning. I I made a big trade in our league of record. You did. You uh, you fired the silver bullet, which was the number your number two overall pick. I did. In our, in our league, we can trade draft picks. You cannot trade your first, so the second is is the strongest draft capital pick you can move, and. It's always a uh, in our league a game of chicken to see who's gonna mm -hmm. who's gonna start just blasting that draft capital away, and the winner this year is Andy. Well, I, I try to be the winner years most years. Is I, Andy. I get impatient. Um, I'm going to double down on my trade four players. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw two names. Okay. Uh, the original name is Sam Laporta, tied in for the Detroit Lions. Currently the tight end two on the season. You still have an opportunity to go and trade for Sam Laporta. You can play up the rookie narrative. Uh, this is a player that is on pace to break the rookie record in terms of total targets. He's not going anywhere. That is my message to you. So I think Sam Laporta is, in the landscape of tight end frustration, is a very worthy player to go and pursue. And very likely, he may be rostered by somebody that has a couple of tight ends on the team because he was picked up as a free agent option. Uh, it's possible he was picked up by the Andrews, Waller, Kittle, Goddard, Kelsey managers in your league. And if any of those are the case, there's going to be an opportunity to pick him up. And, and I, this message is he's worth picking up. He's worth putting on your roster. I think he's an every week start. Now, Jason mentioned it. I did trade Sam Laporta this morning. 
I have Travis Kelsey. So that was something that, look, other than the bye week for Kelsey, he's never touching the field for me. So you're saying Kelsey's going to be better than Laporta this year? Uh, yes. Sorry, uh, was it? Were you? Are you? That in, voice? Is he from Clueless? <laughs> yeah, that was a very California girl. <laughs> so I think Laporta is the pickup, and the the other name I want to throw out there, and I know I mentioned Christian Watson earlier. I actively went and traded for Garrett Wilson this morning. I made the determination. This is a generally untouchable player that the situation in New York is so cataclysmic that people are down. I mean, he hit our waiver wire. He hit the waiver block in our league. Uh, not Sorry, let me rephrase it. He hit the trade block. He was not released. I don't see a way that it doesn't get better for Garrett Wilson. Now, in three weeks, he's got the least accurate quarterback in football in Zach Wilson. He's put up in our league format, 11, which is half point, 11, 17, and like eight. Zach Wilson is not going to be the permanent starter for this team. There's already talk of friction in the locker room. Players very upset about the fact that Robert Sala is a is the Zach Wilson apologist in the room. Players do not want to go out and put max effort on the field if they're not getting the best on the on the offensive side of the football. We've been here before. And Garrett Wilson's a, a, a top five talent at the wide receiver position. So for me, if you can go bargain shop for Garrett Wilson, which I think you can. So. Which I think you can do. I think you can go trade somebody that's had a really juicy or pretty good three weeks and then go make the trade offer for Garrett Wilson. I think it gets better. Yeah, I really I, do. I think New York, it's Trevor Simeon or somebody else. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I will agree with you that when Zach Wilson is replaced, it will get better. Literally, no matter who it is. Trevor Simeon is not good, and it will 100% be better if it is Trevor Simeon. Um, I, I would I would just say that the, the reason I think it works especially well in your context where you traded for him is we're a keeper league. So if it doesn't work out this year, which I could see, you know, the, in the Megla Bowl, I benched Garrett Wilson for four different wide receivers this last week, and it was a good move because he scored fewer than them. And y if it doesn't work out, you have the option of a great keeper value in giving up your second. So if, I, I think if you're out there playing in keeper leagues, it makes a lot more sense to say, hey, this is a player I can't usually get a hold of or a dynasty league. Um, well, and I don't have to start him. I mean, that's the other situation. If you have a couple of good starters, you're looking for a flex, you're looking for a wide receiver three or four, and you can get them on, on the cheap. I I believe that the talent of Garrett Wilson, we saw it last year. Did they have quarterback play in New York last year? Uh, nope. Not when, or when, when Zach Wilson was off the field, they had a little bit. They had better. But I mean, it was it was a challenge on offense, and Garrett Wilson still had a big year. So I look, that's that's a couple of trade for ideas. I will hand off the baton. Well, since you're bringing up last year, I'm going to trade for a player who was great last year, who was bad the first three weeks of last year, who's been bad the first three weeks yeah, of this yeah, year. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he talking has. about Josh Jacobs, currently the running back twenty five in half PPR scoring. He has not eclipsed. 10 fantasy points, 8.1, 7.4, 9.5 fantasy points per game. If you look back at last year, the first three weeks, he averaged 9.5 fantasy points per game. 16.7 opportunities, so he was getting the ball, just wasn't getting it done last year. Don't know why those things happen sometimes, but they're happening again, because this year, he is getting 19.7 opportunities per game. The, the running back landscape is putrid right now. Everyone is in need of running backs. The only teams that seem like they're okay at running back are the ones that just happen to get, you know, a Kyron Williams or 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 Zach, pick, or Zach Moss and pick someone up that was unexpected to add to their roster. Because a lot of these guys that we drafted to be relied upon have not worked out. And I think Josh Jacobs' managers are freaked out that like this guy just isn't getting it done. He's not that good. This is an elite running back who is getting almost 20 opportunities per game with no one on the depth chart that's going to change that going forward. Josh Jacobs, this is the worst stretch of his season. So for me, I will 100%. I've, I've gone and made a couple offers for him in a couple different leagues. Um, I'm not paying a premium. I'm not trying to say, like, I think he's going to be the, the running back three like he was last year after, you know, the, the bad start to the season. But he's a quality volume play that is not going anywhere. 
and managers who have him, I think, are willing to sell him cheap right now. After three weeks, the 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 smell is starting to uh, accumulate on the nostrils of Jacobs' managers because I even found myself in my dynasty league going, is he the guy I try to move? <laughs> Do I try to move him to try to get younger someplace? Because it's not been a fun ride. But I like that you brought him up here. It encourages me, Jason. The, I, I, generally speaking, you have to buy into two running backs who are getting that opportunity. We do have – now we're only three weeks in, but you got to make some decisions. Week one is what freaks me out. They played the Denver Broncos. And in that matchup that we have seen now two other games, and the Washington Manders destroy them on the ground in Brian Robinson. The fiasco against the Miami Dolphins running backs – and in week one, Josh Jacobs and crew was only able to manage 2.5 yards per carry against that Denver Broncos team. Now, maybe they were more fired up because it was week one and they're now getting demoralized and, and losing faith in their defense. But that is, that's the one note where I'm like, I don't know that Jacobs is going to turn it around. But the argument for pure volume, and if you can get pure volume cheaper than you would have paid for the draft, I would do it. Okay. Mike, your trade for candidate is? It is Zach Charbonnet of the Seattle Seahawks, rookie running back, who and this is a this is a play for the future. The the snaps of Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet are cross fading. Like look look Walker has been great. He, like for fantasy football. I think that's what makes trading for Zach Charbonnet an easy, even easier proposition right now. When you go to whoever's holding on to Charbonnet, you go, look at what Walker's doing. You think Char like Charbonnet is is not the guy right now. Meanwhile, the snaps for Kenneth Walker, 63, 61, 51. The snaps for Charbonnet, 24, 26, 43. He was brought down on the two-yard line on an absolute beast of a run. He he was drafted in round two for a reason. I still like I don't think he's overtaking Kenneth Walker to be the number one. But I think that this is going to morph into a timeshare sooner rather than later. And right now, you don't have you don't have production that is that is matching the the outside peripherals. Looking at the opportunities that Charbonnet is getting each week, three three opportunities week one, six the next, eleven the next one, and Charbonnet is going to be the guy they turn to when when they need to pass the ball. And they're scoring thirty seven points each of the past two weeks. Like this is a this is an offense that's starting to get it going. Both Walker and Charbonnet can have fantasy relevance, but you, it, but, and you're, Andy, you're going to talk about Kenneth Walker. If a manager is in love with Walker right now, it's going to be pretty hard to go get him. Meanwhile, Charbonnet is not doing a ton, and I think that the arrow is going to be pointing up. Yeah, let's transition into trade away because I, I intentionally put Kenneth Walker into that category. He and you guys might both disagree with this assertion. He's the running back three, so it's rare to say, it's, "Hey, a guy that's dominating for fantasy, you should move him." But it's very difficult. Charbonnet's snap counts are going up. He seems to be the two-minute drill back. Kenneth Walker has scored four touchdowns in two weeks. Okay, Josh Jacobs, three games, all those opportunities, no touchdowns. You're not getting thirty-eight touchdowns a, a year from Kenneth Walker. He has benefited from two weeks, Detroit, Carolina, 37 points in each week. I think he's a top 12 running back. But if you can cash in on the ceiling level, like you could go get a different running back right now. Like could you could you go and acquire, you know, make an offer for the tippy-tippy top of the running back position if you attach Kenneth Walker with somebody else? Would you be tempted? If You're you saying put, to try to go get Christian McCaffrey using Kenneth Walker plus something else. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, just I, because I would it, do that. I would do that if I can trade up from Kenneth Walker. I would do that. Now, let me let me offer one more. Two guys we talked about. Would you trade Kenneth Walker for Josh Jacobs and Garrett Wilson if if the manager had that? Yes. Okay. Whew. I would. That's that's very. I, I would as well. That takes. You would. That takes I would. some courage. I would rather have the. The, the Jacobs and Wilson, Garrett Wilson side. Yeah, I mean, those are two players that have been frustrating through three games that 
opportunity and talent is something you believe in for both. And that would take a lot. I mean, Garrett Kenneth Walker played fifty one percent of snaps this past week. This past and he was great. He was he was dominant. Um he is a super, super talented player. But uh he has dealt with injuries historically. And Mike, you know, you just talked about Zach Charbonnet. There are going to be some games where I think Charbonnet is going to be more involved and Kenneth Walker is not going to fall into the end zone. And um, you know, week one for Kenneth Walker is going to be part of his story. You know, he, 12 attempts, 64 yards, didn't score. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good enough for running back 28 that week. Well, and if you look at the, the, the following week, I mean, he, he scored 17 fantasy points, but he scored two touchdowns. Like, if Yeah, 17 for 43 on the ground. Yeah, yeah, two and a half yards of carry. He didn't have a great game. He had a very, very good fantasy game because he got, got a couple touchdowns. So it's just a matter of, do you think the touchdowns are going to keep coming on on the regular? I'm sure he gets plenty of them this year, but it's not going to be two a game. And if, as of right now, would you trade him for Bijan? Yes, I would much rather have Bijan. I mean that trade I, that trade offer could, yeah. will go through in leagues for sure. I think I would do that. I would try to extract a little bit more because Bijan had the down game. Um, but looking at like five zone carries, no, that's that's the money. That's where we want our running backs getting attempts. Kenneth Walker has. Six total, three in week two, three in week three. Charbs already has two. and I'd, I'd, Look, I'd rather have six, but the point is Kenneth Walker is not the exclusive goal line running back. They're well, already factoring in Charbonnet into those plans. And last year, I believe, he if was, my memory is correct, he was the only player in the NFL who right. had 100% of his teams inside the five already three weeks, and he does not. And he was very inefficient. He's been far more efficient yeah, he's, <laughs> on converting them this year. Yeah, he's yeah. a good player. This is not a. Yes. This is not, and it's really important that everyone listening understands this. This is not a saying Kenneth Walker's going to stink. You should trade him away. This is saying he he's at probably a peak value that you can capitalize on if you squeeze everything out of that. Uh, you know, that's the point is capitalize on peaks as opposed to just saying, oh, he's not going to be as good, so let me get rid of him. That's he, not what we're saying. Yeah, and he had he had nine touchdowns last year, but six of the nine came in two in three weeks where he scored two a week. So nice. it, it is exactly about um, capitalizing on the high performance of the most recent week, trying to remove some of the emotion from the equation and looking at higher value options. So, uh, Jason, you have a uh, oh, provocative – a provocative yeah. – I feel like you have made a decision here. I have made a decision, and my decision is if I have King Henry, Derrick Henry, the Yeti, the unstoppable, immovable force, the monstrous mountain of a man, I am going to try to trade him away for something that I think is um, more safe. I think there's a lot of risk in Derrick Henry right now, and he has not been terrible. He's he's you know his first two weeks was was pretty good. This last week was a down week, but with his name recognition, his volume, uh, the fact that he's still been okay this season so far, you're gonna be able to have teams that are are willing to pay a, a premium for a premium player for a player who was in the running for MVP over the last couple of years at the running back position. He's awesome. He's great. However. For the first time in his career post taking over, he has competition for touches. He has another competent running back on the team. He has someone stealing both carries and snaps away from him. He's obviously the oldest he's ever been and will continue to be so. Um, <laughs> That's very astute. Thank you. This is a team that looks like they could be on the cusp of collapse. And I think that they will recover quickly as a franchise. I think they'll make a couple good transactions and and uh, pack it in if that happens. They're, now, right now, they're going to be fighting for wins. Vrabel's a good coach. Uh, it's a it's a well run franchise. But you look at the upcoming schedule. You say, okay, well, this week, Cincinnati. Who do you expect to win that game right now? The Tennessee Titans or the Cincinnati Bengals? Even with a hobble, Joe Burrow. I'm sure that the Cincinnati Bengals are f the favored team. Derrick Henry's going to do much better in wins than he does in losses. Um, he also does better on the road than he does at home, and and so this is a this is a home loss. So it might not be a good week for Derrick Henry. You got Baltimore two weeks later. You got a bye week after that. And if at this point in the season, coming out of the bye, this is a team that has not won a lot of games. I just worry that the, the future will be focused on the risk 
is calamity. It's not just mediocrity. The risk to me in holding on to Derrick Henry is that, and I don't think it's a guarantee. I don't think, oh, Derrick Henry's done. But I see the path where Derrick Henry could be done soon, and you don't want to be holding that bag, especially when it's a valuable bag you can get something for right now. So to me, that's the player I'm most scared of uh, the, the future, the rest of the season. I think you could definitely find people that are willing to make the bet and the gamble and say, hey, he's going to be back to form. And there's going to be some people out there, if you put him on the block, that's probably interested in that. So if you believe yeah, I mean, that the odds are low, he comes back to form and this team competes, then... I would rather have, so to talk about my trade away and trade for Canada, I would rather have Josh Jacobs than Derrick Henry rest of season. I think most players out there, if that trade was offered, they would they would take Derrick Henry sure. over Josh Jacobs, who hasn't been good so far this year. So I think that would be easy. But you might be able to do even better if you've got a good team, you've got some wins, and you want to take a shot at Saquon because maybe he misses this week and a manager is desperate, or or package him and trade up. I, there's a lot of you, you know Derrick Henry right now, and the reason why I'm saying trade him now is because he's got value. Like if he ends up having a bad couple of weeks, goes on bye week middle of the season, you're not going to be able to get anything for him. Mike, yours is depressing. Yeah, it's it, – uh, look, a tra any any trade-away candidate, it's it's depressing because, like, uh, you're you're scared of King Henry, uh, that he's circling the, the, the whirlpool and he's about to head down. Swim strong, Derek. <laughs> I want you to succeed. Yes, we do. Uh, my trade-away candidate is Damian Pierce of the Houston Texans. He's currently the running back 29. And I still believe in the player of Damian Pierce, but I believe that he is in close to an impossible situation for his skill set. He has been like he had a good week this week. That's why I'm saying maybe you can find someone who's desperate for a running back and, and looks just at the total fantasy points and says, OK, I'll take on the risk of Damian Pierce that he's going to get better. But he's averaging only 2.38 yards after contact, which that is the same as A.J. Dillon, who has been uh, ferociously dunked upon th throughout this season by you guys. He's averaging two and a half yards. What? <laughs> he's <laughs> averaging. I love that guy. Two and a half yards per carry on the season. And it's, again, I think it's the offensive line. Now, you the story that you can weave is the offensive line is, is going to get healthier and Maybe that's something that you believe because they should. They got some guys on IR that that are going to return. Maybe things do actually improve for Damian Pierce, but I think we're a long ways away from that happening. And it is not the 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 carrot that was dangled out for all of us for preseason was holy crap. Damian Pierce might be truly a three down workhorse in this in this offense. He is You're not, saying he's no Zach Moss. He, yeah, I'm saying he's not getting 98% of the snaps, Zach Moss style. They are going to – Devin Singletary is the two-minute drill guy. They're going to use Devin Singletary's skill set when they're trying to catch up, which they will be trying to catch up of in, in a lot of games. The upcoming schedule, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, the Saints – and then a gross, bye week. Gross, and gross, Pittsburgh's gross. actually twenty ninth against running backs. He, he, so yeah. if he if he fails again this week, I'm going to be real depressed. He, which he probably will. And he probably that, will. That's the way I'm projecting it as well. So so even if you're holding out hope for the offensive line to return, it might be five weeks from now before you're actually recouping some of the dividends from that that gamble. And by then you like then Damian Pierce's trade value could be absolutely cratered, and you're just you are you're all in. Your chips are all in on Damian Pierce. And if you're tempted to buy low on Damian Pierce on the other side of the logic train, and you're saying, "Hey, I'm going to let him hit the ground, wait for that," he's got the single most depressing end of season playoff schedule I've ever seen in my life. He faces the week before going into the playoffs. He faces the Jets in in New York. Perfect. Then he faces Tennessee. Ter great run defense. Cleveland. Great oh, run defense. God. Tennessee. <laughs> uh, same as the one before. Yeah, they have to, he wait, has to wait, play. Wait, 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 wait. I hear what you're saying, though. Let's invert that. So you're telling me. Oh, you're telling me, me Derek Henry. You're telling me the Houston, Yeti. Blake Houston. What am I doing? Trace for Derek Henry. Jason, you have made a terrible mistake. Retract. 
get the, 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 the back Yeti out of the is, The Wait. Yeti is the Yeti places. Yeah, the Yeti the, is winning championships this week or this year. Houston, blank Houston in the playoffs. Oh, that's rough stuff. Well, you make your own decision <laughs> out there, Bookland. No, uh, no, but between the Houston and Houston game, he does play Seattle at home. Mm, mm, that's, that's pretty fair. nice. Um, I, going back to Damian Pierce, um, I think this is great to bring up, Mike, because especially bringing up what happened in preseason. This was a player I was O-U-T the whole offseason. Completely did not want Damian Pierce. Didn't have any shares of him in best ball. I saw the 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 way that this could happen, and then preseason happened, and it was like, oh my gosh, they're actually going to use him as the two minute drill back, as the as the as the passing as everything as everything. They're going to use him as like a full time workhorse back, and there's just not many of them. Well, they've they've already shown that's not what they're doing. That isn't what they're going to do. And if he's not a workhorse back, you're going to be disappointed a lot more than you're going to have great I don't, games. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think you can get anything for him. After that three weeks. Well, not stretch. after this show. <laughs> I, and I, I think I think you're at least going to have some volume from him. I mean, when you talk about talented player that's going to have volume, I don't think it's going to be a fun ride. I think you have to look at it like he's not going to win you weeks. I mean, he he got into the end zone because someone got dragged down on the one. He's going to score every time. That happens. Yeah. So that'll be nice. But, I mean, the, the yards per carry is terrible. I'm, I'm somewhat happy with three targets a week every yeah. week. I mean, that is that's going to help you a little bit. But so much better than zero. But, I mean, his fantasy production in the first two weeks was five points and four points. Yikes. I mean, that, and that was against, you know, Indianapolis in week two, Baltimore week one. I, his snap count did go up last week, and they put up 37 points. And I'm encouraged that the offense could be better. But I, I'm with you, Mike. I, I've tried very hard in my, in my brain to create the pathway for Damian Pierce for it to get a lot better. But, um, but it's not, it's not, easy to find yeah and it's i i'm not disagreeing that it will it could be difficult to find the the trade partner to move on from damian pierce but because you had the one spike week and looking at what's about to happen with the houston texans this is kind of you're you're either bailing out right now and maybe you're not getting a full return on on the trade or you're fully committed to damian pierce I because mean, it's going to is probably going to be a rough three weeks. I want to put it to the test with names. Okay. Because yeah, you say you might not get the full return. Are you trading Damian Pierce for Isaiah Pacheco? I would rather have Pacheco, yes. Are you trading Damian Pierce for Najee Harris? Ooh. That is – that's super tough. I think I'm going to go Najee. But, I mean, they're they're both in a very similar situation of their – it's – these these are talented players. Brees so Hall the, and the offense. Oh, I'd, I'd go Brees Hall. I'd go for. I'd sh shoot for second half upside. Devon H M. Oh, Man, that my. sounds wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not over it. But yes, we'll get H M. Um, that is that is a that was a volatile. That was move. the first name that came up when you brought this up in my mind was. Okay, so would you if you had A Chan, would you would you trade for Pierce or if you had Pierce, would you trade for, for A Chan? I know my answer, but I I don't think things are gonna be great over the next three weeks for Pierce and they could be for A Chan, so I think I make that move. I would as well. The, so talk about a completely different type of player and a different level of utilization. Pierce will have lots of opportunities to run for two yards. A Chan may have minimal opportunities yeah. to run for seventy, right? And that is a tough thing because your your lows may. I mean, it's hard to get lower than what Pierce gave you in week one and two. Okay, uh, I I've got one last uh, question for us that I, I you know we might have more questions from the listeners, but from me, I really want to know where you guys stand on this because I think it is a question that the answer will be so right or so wrong by the end of the season and <laughs> well, if you if when you're trading running back for running back someone wins and someone loses who would you rather have at this point going forward devon achan or zach moss oh <laughs> the I, 100 oh, yeah. man. the 100 percent of snap type of player who's dominating right but has a jt problem possibly yes, See, I, or yeah. 
Oh, that's so. I want you guys to have to answer this. I think it is a. I think it's a very fair thing to break bring up because it's if Jonathan Taylor comes back week five, I think he goes right into what Zach Moss is doing right now. Only it's Jonathan Taylor who Zach Moss has been great, but Jonathan Taylor is is a better player. There's a chance that maybe it's you know like only seventy percent of the snaps or something for Taylor. But, but Moss, the point is Zach Moss, Moss is the, the done. point is that Zach Moss is valuable crater if Taylor actually plays for the Colts. This oh man, it's such a mess because it's not football stuff. Like, right? It's it, it is. I I'm not in the locker room for the Colts. I'm not in the management. You I, don't know how real dug in Jonathan Taylor is. Right. In the context of uh, Ersay. Yeah, and how dug in Ersay is. Yeah, and and then over on the Miami side. What is the health of Jeff Wilson? When when everybody is is healthy for them, and, and Ahmed too, when everyone is healthy, all four players legit could take snaps for the Miami Dolphins. Like that that is something that could happen. For sure. Yeah, I mean and, and this that's is a disaster for I mean, fantasy. Maybe maybe not oh, enough man. fantasy analysts say, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't I think it's okay to answer that one because I, I haven't traded my running back depth in part in one of my leagues because I know Zach Moss has a it's like you look at the bottom of the milk carton and it says could expire next week. <laughs> now he might if, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like yeah, and yeah, then yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, I'm yeah. going to take another sip of this and I'm going to keep it in my fridge and it's delicious right now. And it could be delicious all year like legitimately. Let's play the hypothetical out. JTT does not I, come back. Or he gets let traded me just, to a different team. I think that's more yeah, realistic. Yeah, he 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 does let not play. Let me just throw it. this out cuz we do have a a recent tweet from today. Uh, from uh, from Dan Graziano, uh, Colts running back Jonathan Taylor, quote, still doesn't want to play for the Colts, and the Colts, quote, still don't want to give him a long-term contract. So we are, we're in the same exact spot we were with Jonathan Taylor, but someone has to, <laughs> someone has the leverage, someone does if, not. If Zach Moss is alone, and Jonathan Taylor does not return to play with that uniform on, He's a Zach great. Moss is what rest of season? Top fifteen running back. I think he's I mean, that is, the running back from here on out, I would say the running back eighteen. I think and then so you have to make that call because if, if that's the case, he's better than H N. He's a better player. He's gonna have a better outcome than H N if there's no Jonathan Taylor, I think. Yeah, if if there's no Jonathan Taylor, you get a one hundred percent snap player it's really who's who's involved in the pass game. Very follow difficult up. to follow up quote. Oh. Graziano says it would not surprise me if his first game of the season was in a different uniform. And guess who was the most interested? I that's what's so funny. It was, the, Do it was the, the Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins. Oh, I think they're still very interested. But oh, although but though most are has been great, but they've dealt with injuries. Like Ahmed's been hurt, jo Jeff Wilson's been hurt, Mostert always gets hurt, A Chan's been hurt. It's, um, I think it would be difficult for the Miami Dolphins after having what happened this last week. I think it would be difficult for them to trade for Jonathan Taylor to give up draft capital and a contract. I disagree. Now, here's the thing. I'm saying that right now, like this week. If something happens where Jonathan Taylor continues to play chicken with the Colts and he's just waiting there for another injury around the league and A-chan goes down or Mostert goes down, obviously, I think. It's crazy. They're going to grab him. Crazy situation. Yeah, the A-chan is the – that is a scratchers. I mean, you – Pretty decent odds on it, but you just don't know. A chan could be unstartable, mm -hmm. and A chan could be a league winner. Yeah, that is a rare combination let's, in a player. Let's do the league winner thing, A chan. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Thursday night breakdown. I'm looking forward to this game. The Detroit Lions, two and one. Taking on the Green Bay Packers, they have to go to Lambeau and do it. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus one and a half. That is, I mean, to me, that is a profound line. Uh, the over-under is 46. Both teams are two and one, which is another reason I'm surprised that the Lions are road favorites here. You know, Lambeau is a tough place to play, and um, the and, winner takes control of the division. And it looks like the Packers are going to be healthy. I think as of this moment, the expectation is that both Christian Watson and Aaron Jones will be available. Obviously, that's it's still a little too early to know that definitively, but that's what's been reported. What's interesting is that Jordan Love has had a really fantasy-relevant, productive, 
amalgamation of a season. They, yes. And I think I think this is really, really good for the Jordan Love fantasy believer because the first three weeks he produced because he has produced at a higher than sustainable touchdown rate. So he's throwing touchdowns at a really high percentage relative to his throws. I think he's thrown the most uncatchable passes in football. Ew. You know, we talk about the Luke Musgrave shots. He's completing only 53% of his passes. Yeah. And yet he's finished at quarterback three and six. That is better than only Zach Wilson. Now, he, his uh, his touchdown rate did decline. We are back at 7% on the year because it went down to 2.3% this past week. I say all that to say I believe he's a pretty good quarterback, and I think that the accuracy things will improve over time. It will improve when you add Christian Watson and Aaron Jones back to the offense. And so the touchdowns have masked it. And I think you can – that touchdown percentage can go down and the accuracy can go up and you can sustain fantasy value. Does he sustain it this week against a Lions defense that's pretty middle of the pack this year? They're 14th against quarterbacks, 13th against running backs, 10th against wideouts. They've made pretty vast improvements. I enjoy watching Brian Branch roam the field. It's – for fantasy, I mean – I think I'm playing everybody. You know, like Aaron. If Aaron Jones is back, you're you have to put him in. Um, AJ Dillon should be on the bench. AJ Dillon should be on the bench. <laughs> he should be. I love I love the sentence. <laughs> I'm playing everybody. Dot dot dot. Yeah. Well, AJ sorry. Dillon should be on the bench. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm as in I'm playing the the regular players like that. Uh, Christian Watson. If 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 it's his first game back, I don't care. I'm going to fire him up. Romeo Dobbs has played too well to not be in flex consideration for you. Musgrave just Romeo keeps Dobbs or Garrett missing. Wilson this week. Uh, give me what's the Jets matchup? Kansas City. Give me Romeo Dobbs. I would as well. Okay. Uh, sorry to cut you off there. Were and, you? Uh, no, no, that was. I'm just saying. Like this, this, this is exciting. This is the Packer team that we had the hopes for. Of like the Jordan Love made a bet on himself. The Packers kind of hedged their bet on is Jordan Love the guy with the the way that they reworked the contract for him. And he should succeed. Like if Jordan Love is a competent quarterback with the players who are around him, he should succeed in the NFL. And so far, it feels so far we're we're feeling all right. It feels like he has a deep wide receiver room with Watson, Dobbs, Jaden Reed, who is an emerging yes, I think talent. He is, and then Wicks and Luke Musgrave, Musgrave yeah. and like it actually feels like they have equipped him in a way that. Only Aaron Rodgers would have dreamed. <laughs> it's crazy because they're all so young. There's like no veteran here outside of uh, Aaron no, Jones at the no. running back position. It's just the youngest core of really good receiving options that can grow together. You you do need Jordan Love to play better. I do. He's missing too many open throws. Um, he cannot continue to do that and succeed and and have touchdowns or other things mask his play. He's got to improve. Uh, this is a it's matchup. Nice that his incomplete passes are hitting empty dirt. Right. As He's got one to, pick on the year. As opposed to being picked off. Uh, this is a really good matchup. It's at home, which I like. I, I really like that this game um, is in Lambeau for the, the Green Bay side of the field. Do you start Jared Goff? Or who who would you start Jared Goff or Jordan Love in this, in this same matchup? Because Goff has not Ooh. been a road warrior, and Jordan Love – has been running the ball, which is, you know, it's it's really nice. He's he's on pace for over 400 rushing yards. It's a very nice baseline to give you. I'm, I think the home player is probably the pick there. I think Jordan loves the pick. I I'm Jared, going. I'm going Jared Goff. Goff is um, he's got one good game and two disappointments. Sure. The and we are we're still a little bit too early to fully start trusting the the information from schedule adjusted uh fantasy points given up but as of right now you know the, the green bay packers when you're adjusting for schedule at the quarterback position they are a plus matchup because they mostly because they gave up so many extra points to the desmond ritter <laughs> and the atlanta falcons uh but they gave up plus points so far to justin fields huge points to desmond ritter and then they held the saints under which granted that one's a little bit hard because their starter went down in the third quarter. I think I'm still a little scarred from last year, and I need to be proven before I – or I need to see it to believe it with regards to golf on the road. It's, if it's you look fair. at his splits last year at home, he averaged 21.3 fantasy points on the road, 
eleven point five. Blarf. Yeah, that's it's fair. It's fair. Uh, Jordan Love or Justin Fields this week? That's the number one I, question on our Start Sit tool on the website. Which, by the way, <laughs> quick shout out: you can get the Start Sit tool now in your pocket. There is a free uh, in season app. Type the fantasy footballers into the app store, download it. It's free. News, starts it, rankings. We're just all of our free we're just content putting it all is, in there. It's basically there, and so you you should have it. it makes it really really easy. It's a great app. Um, I would go Justin Fields. I would assume you both will go Jordan Love. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna give my heart a break. I don't blame you. Sometimes yeah, what it, the doctor I talked to him after the Fields three starts, blood pressure issues. You, wants you, wants me to bring it down. You brought up uh, earlier this week, or or yeah, I think it was earlier this week. You brought up the fact that if Justin Fields, if you bench him and he does good, you go all right. We're we're back. I've got an asset. If you start him and he does bad, you're popping pills yeah so i i don't blame anyone for for taking any other starter over fields i am uh i think the matchup against the detroit or the the denver broncos i'm gonna go that way dan campbell says he feels good about uh his left tackle playing uh david montgomery has a chance to play is this a dable chance to play or is this a realistic chance this to get is, on the field this is more realistic to me yeah being thursday night i'm not sure does it change how you would treat jameer gibbs and whether you would play him no, I'm going to no. play Jameer Gibbs either way. Okay, talk to me about this. I look. I am. I I went out on the record. <laughs> Jameer Gibbs is my guy this year. Jameer. He's been he's been the running back twenty four and twenty three the last two weeks, which is not meeting expectations and also not destroying you. Now is yeah. that because you saw just how excited the Detroit Lions front office was when they smashed the draft button to take a running back? at uh, 12 overall, whose superpower is catching the ball, and in two of three games they've given him two targets? Yeah, it's concerning. It, it is. What are you doing? Opportunities the last two weeks for Jameer Gibbs. One with Montgomery in the game, 16 opportunities. One with him out of the game, 19. Yet that has not translated to anything that makes you happy for fantasy. Those are great numbers. 16 opportunities, 19 opportunities are great numbers. You look at how he performed in those 17 carries, he had 80 rushing yards, 4.7 a clip. He was very good. He didn't score a touchdown, and he wasn't targeted very much in the passing game, which we know he should be and can be. He had nine targets a week prior. It has been kind of a oh, so close week one, fell on a touchdown. Ah, oh, just didn't get the, you know, it was all right week two. Week three wasn't involved in the passing game, but there's still, he has looked good individually. His opportunities have been there. The fantasy value hasn't come. I am not at all steering away from Jameer Gibbs. Amon Ra's in your lineup. Sam Laporta's in your lineup. Josh Reynolds, people went out. They said, hey, let's give it a go. Um, no targets in 77% of snaps. It was the Laporta, Amon Ra, and uh, why is the name escaping me? Khalif Raymond mm -hmm. show yeah, yeah, last, yes, yes. last week. And yeah. so Reynolds is not really – he's too risky business to me. Khalif Raymond was what? people thought josh reynolds do you think they just switched jerseys they did yeah actually yeah a little swap um anything else from this game you guys want to discuss no i don't think so i'm not looking to play either of these defenses um even though it's a thursday night and oftentimes you know it, it doesn't become the bar barn burner you want these I'm excited two teams have game. put up a lot of points and and it yeah i'm i'm very excited for the nfl version of the like this is super important this division is one of these two teams to have. Second time in four weeks, we have Lions Thursday Night Football, I believe. All right. We got them oh, week, yeah, we got them week one. Yep. So that's not something we, people would normally be thrilled about from years past, but I am thrilled about it now. It's a very fun division to watch. Um, before we close out, did, you think Kirk Cousins gets traded? Uh, they're 0-3. I mean, there were rumors before the season, so I mean, like, if they're not – where. Oh, you're, are you the Jets? Are you saying I mean, like New York? In, I mean, that's. I don't think they can afford. Sorry, it. when I say where, I mean, <laughs> aside from the one team that really needs a quarterback right now is Washington. Go back home. Maybe I don't. Know. I, just, I don't. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, There's yeah. been some some rumors because they're zero three. I do not believe that they will trade him. He's playing very well, and this is you know if if they lose the next three games, maybe they'll consider it. But. Uh, okay. I think they okay. need them right now. 
All right, that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Tomorrow we have our starts of the week, the matchup previews, and then, uh, well, I get to spin that familiar wheel on Friday. I've missed it. I've missed that wheel. Yeah. That'll do it. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.